Hi, it's Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I want to talk about ways to use gesso. Gesso is made from chalk and water and gum, and traditionally it is used to uh, prepare canvases for, uh, for painting. But today I want to show you more mixed media techniques that you can use in mixed media, altered books, art journals, junk journals whatever it is you like to play with. So I'm going to show you a few ways to put down backgrounds and a few ways to embellish and finish some pages. And this is the part of the video where I remember that it's a very bad idea to wear black and work with gesso. Uh, all right, so the first thing I want to show you is how to make pulled work. And I'm going to do this because I have been asked about this uh, several times ever since I showed it as a background in one of my altered book pages. So, uh, and if you'd like to see a flip through of this altered book, I will put a link to that video beneath here. And you can see that. To make pulled work, you want to take, as usual, I'm working in an altered book. But you can, again, work in blank pages or even just paper, you know. So whatever it is that you're working with. And I'm going to take my brush and my gesso and add a very, very thick, gloppy coat to both sides. Okay. You want it to be very generous. And then you want to press it together and give it a really good press, really good seal there. And then you want to carefully peel it back open. And you can see now that what you have is very similar to stucco except way better. I'm going to put this aside and let it dry and come back later in the video and show you how to make color to make it really pop. Now let's look at some mark making, which if you followed any of my videos, you know is my favorite way to finish and embellish a page, an art journal page especially. That needs, uh, has a little empty space and needs something to add interest to the page. You also know, if you follow my videos, that I tend to use the same techniques with different media over and over. So please be patient if you've seen this, but hopefully we have a new few eyeballs today, so we're going to do it again. And if you think that my trusty teacup is involved, you're right, because this is devoted only to mark making. And I'm going to ink it up in some gesso here. And then clearly, clearly a, a darker paper is going to give you better resolution on this mark making. And you can make some coffee rings. You can also look around and see if you've got some found objects. This is a little jam jar. And it will let you make contrasting sizes of rings. I also like to use this uh, water bottle top. Another found object that makes really fun marking and stamping, this is a cork from a bottle. I'm just going to make some, some dots, some irregular balls here. And that would be a great way to fill up some space. You can also, let's see, mark making, use a toothbrush. And uh, this is messy. And you just want to use this to make spritz. I saw a really good video where a woman was doing a picture of, uh, she was making a picture of a galaxy, a drawing of a galaxy. And she used this technique to make all of her little stars and planets in the sky. It was really effective. 
another thing that you can do is actually work with a proper rubber stamp. You probably want to use something uh, basic that is not too ornate or frilly, but experiment. You just want to paint a thin layer of gesso on your stamp. And there you go. I like to use this also not only in pages, but if I'm decorating one of my sketchbooks uh, before I take it out, it's a good way to decorate the cover because it adds a lot of contrast if you have a black or a dark navy cover. And I uh, just wanted to show you this stamp for the fun of it. It's from the oldie days, and uh, it's actually metal. And it looks like it's got some kind of machine parts, probably an engine or from an, uh, an automotive thing. And before copiers, if you wanted to make lots of copies of these ornate drawings, you could just ink these up and add them to your paperwork. And I think they look so cool. So you don't really know what it is, but it looks great. Another fun way to work into and over your pages and add interest and texture is to use gesso with your stencils. I have shown this technique in a uh, another video where I just talk about messy stencil techniques, but it has a lot of other things besides gesso. So if you'd like to see ways to use your stencils in unusual messy ways, the link is below this video. You can find it there. So I'm just taking my stencil and I am painting the gesso over it. And you want to be super generous here because you actually want to create a little bit of a raised relief. Very subtle, but it looks really good. And you can see here that not only does it look really cool, but it will have just very, very slight raised aspect to it. And it will look even better if you add some color. I've gone ahead and uh, I did this before so that you don't have to literally watch the paint dry. This is one where I painted over the gesso and stencil work with acrylic. This is where I used uh, distress stains. Okay. And you just want to Pop it over it like that. And that looks very effective. This is where I use a distress spray. And it looks very antique -y and fun. Clearly, you can use just about anything. If you don't have these in your arsenal, you can use um, an ink wash or a watercolor wash. Just experiment with, with what you have, and play around, and improvise. Now let's look at another way to add full page coverage to add a background to a page you want to work on. Because you can actually paint with gesso and you can add some color to it for a little bit of interest and depth. Uh, acrylic paint works well if you want to stir some of that into your gesso. I'm using a little bit of uh, fountain pen ink. It's kind of a plum color. But obviously, because you're adding it to white, white, white gesso, it's going to go quite pale. And you just want to paint it on there. And you can see that it actually looks a, a, a lot like a chalk paint, which is a, a look that I really like. You can also, as we did earlier, do a little bit of... Uh, tinted mark making. If you want to finish a page like that, it looks really good. 
And another thing that you can do to get some of that distressed wallpaper look that I love is just load up a card and then scrape and pounce around. Make some nice, nice messiness there. Now let's go and finish up our backgrounds by looking at the pulled work that is now dried. And there's so many ways that you can add color here. You can, um, this is a chalk pastel, and I'm just going to go over it like this. And that in itself is a look. Or you can smudge it and blend it in. And you're going to get something like that. You can also use something water soluble. And in this case, I have a uh, chunky stick by Derwent. It's graphite based. And again, I'm just going to rub it over this. And it's mussy. Or you can blend it and smudge it. One of the reasons I love these graphite sticks. You can do so much with them. Or you can actually activate it with water, as it is water-soluble. You're going to get something really cool and painterly. Okay. I, let's see. Gelatos. I'm going to be honest. I am not the biggest gelato fan in the whole world, but I do really like the way they look in this pulled work. Just look at that. It just really, because it's a little bit more, it's, it's not quite water. It's not quite the chalk. It's nice and soft and fun. So I do have to admit that I like using gelato in the pulled work. And then finally, my favorite is to just take a stamp pad and have fun working it right over the top. And hey presto, you have an instant, mysterious, fun, textured, cool background. Woof! If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I post every Friday with mixed media and art journals, altered books. And if you like that sort of thing, you can subscribe to my monthly newsletter, which will bring you art tutorials, uh, some free vintage paper downloads, and a lot of other fun stuff right into your inbox. And you can subscribe uh, to uh, the text underneath here. And uh, if you would like to leave some feedback or a comment or question, let me hear from you. And now I have to go um, wash all of the gesso out of my black t-shirt. Or I could just say that it's a look. Although, to be honest, I have a lot of clothes with that look, so I don't know if anybody's buying that anymore. Until next Friday, get up and go make something.